Okay, let us discuss about the top roller surface. Top drafting rollers in a draw frame <coughs> are covered by synthetic rubber. Hardness values of those covers are mentioned here. That is, it could be 60 to 70 degree shore hardness for soft covers, medium 70 to 90 degree shore hardness and hard is greater than 90 degree shore hardness. So, three types of shore hardness of the covers are used. Now, what is the purpose of these covers? But the bottom rollers are made of steel and then we have flutes on the surface. The top rollers though made of steel, they are covered by a synthetic rubber. Now, first of all this will reduce the noise. This is the one more imp most important you know, um, uh, factor. The other thing is that the soft covers flattens more under pressure against the steel bottom roller and create a large area of contact on the fibers and therefore, there is a better grip on the fibers and hence better guidance of the fibers. The surface being soft under pressure they easily yield and therefore, they flatten and hence you have a large surface area of contact between the roller and the fibers and hence grip is better and therefore, the fibers can be pulled out in the from the drafting zone. These are the advantages of having soft covers on the top roller surface. But the disadvantage is that softer covers wear out faster. See these are polymeric material. So, as the machine runs, there is a continuous abrasion between the fiber and the rubber. This continuous abrasion means that the rubber part will gradually wear out. So, after some time, we have to replace the covering. So, the wear out rate depends upon the softness of the cover. Other thing which can be noticed is this that there could be helical groove as shown in the picture. Helical groove on top roller surface transport dust particles from clearing rod to the suction unit. That is the purpose of having grooves there. That is as they rotate they will transport the dust from the clearing rod towards the suction unit. So, therefore, you may find that the top roller surface will be is having some groove also. So, therefore, this groove is important especially when we process trashy fibers. That is when we process carded cotton which contain lot of dust particles. In such cases, we must have groups on the surface of the top rollers. The top roller let us see another aspect is the how the top roller hardness affects the friction field and the way the pressure is distributed. So, here in the diagram what we see that between two rollers represented by the by the blue rectangles, this sliver is gripped. This is just a cross sectional view. And at the bottom, what we see is a diagram that shows the pressure distributions or the friction field. With the way the pressure gets distributed, in a similar fashion, the friction field also is distributed. Now, what we see in the first case when the both the rollers are very, very hard as an example let us say the top roller is also made of steel. So, the sliver is gripped between two steel rollers. In this case what we see that at the center 
the pressure is maximum. And thereafter, there is a steep decline in pressure curve from center to both side of the edges. So, why the pressure declines towards the edge? Because towards the edge, the fibers can simply slip over each other and therefore, the thickness of the material near the edge, both the left hand edge and the right hand edge is, is little less than the thickness of the material which is there in the center part of this fiber. So, there will be steep decline of pressure from center to the edges when both the rollers are very, very hard and the way the pressure is distributed in a similar way the friction field though the extent from the, the extension is shown from left to right, but the intensity of the field will also change exactly in a similar manner. There is improvement when you go from hard to medium hard top roller. What we see here that the roller surface can yield a bit and therefore, the grip on the material by the rollers is better. So, the decline is not so sharp from the center to the edges. From there as we move to the last one where the top roller is much softer, then we see that the top roller surface completely surrounds the fiber mass and therefore, what happens in this case? The pressure is acting on each and every part of the fiber, even the fibers which are there near the edges, they are also receiving some pressure and therefore, all these fibers are under pressure and hence the friction field is also working on them. So, that automatically means that the grip is always better on the fibers if we have a relatively softer top roller surface. This is the idea why we need softer co coverings on the uh, top rollers. However, as has been mentioned that the synthetic rubber, co rubber covers are prone to wear out and hence as they wear out what happens? There will be change in the surface of the cover, sometimes crack may develops on them, sometimes with time what happens that the cover becomes very, very hard with time because of continuous running the heat generation with time there will be some chemical changes in the constituents of the synthetic rubber and it sometimes becomes very, very hard. Besides there will be an abrasion also. So, after some time the rollers are either have to be changed or we can simply grind the roller. So, there is a technique called grinding which we will discuss later on that we can grind once, twice or thrice and reuse the rollers, but after few grindings we have to discard the covering and replace it by a new one. From there we go to the drafting roller diameter. The choice of roller diameters is guided by following factors and what are these factors? One is the most important factor is the fiber length. The second is the production rate of the machine. The third is the avoiding incidence of roller lapping. And the fourth one is the frictional grip on fibers. So, these are the four factors which we have to keep in mind to decide what should be the diameter of the rollers in the drafting unit. The roller diameter must cater to the cotton whose staple length varies between 22 to 54 millimeter without resorting to frequent changes. This is also have to keep in mind that the length range of fibers that the machine should be capable to process is varying between 22 to 54 mm. So, once we buy a machine, the machine should be capable to process 
cotton fibers in this range. Now, let us take a very simple example to start with. So, what is the influence of fiber length in deciding the diameter of the rollers? The simplest diapering unit is shown where we see two pair of rollers only. All the rollers are of same diameter and what we see is that the diameter of the rollers as shown in the diagram is capital R D. So, if the rollers are brought close to each other almost on the verge of touching each other, then the distance between the nip of the two rollers will be how much will be exactly equal to R d, why R d is the diameter of the rollers, because you will have half R d from here to here and we will have another half R d for the other rollers. So, in the half d and half R d, half R d if we join, we get the distance between the two nips and that distance becomes equal to capital R d that is the diameter of the roller. That means, if I use a diameter capital R d, then the nip to nip distance becomes exactly equal to capital R d. But if we move the rollers from each other and create a gap of epsilon, then the distance between the nip will be R d plus epsilon which is the gap. This gap is known as setting between the two rollers. Now, the important point is that nip to nip distance should be close to the fiber length, but should not be less than fiber length. If it is less than fiber length, then there is a problem. The problem is that the fiber will be stretched because if the fiber is simultaneously nipped by both the rollers and the front pair moves faster than the back pair, then the fiber will be under tension and within no time the fiber will break and therefore, a long fiber will be broken into two pieces and we do not want to break the fibers, we want to retain the length of the fibers. Therefore, under no circumstances the nip to nip distance should not be less than the length of fiber that we want to process. So, it could be the minimum distance between them should be almost equal to fiber length or little more than the fiber length, but not less than the fiber length. If the roller diameter therefore, is d r in this diagram if you look at it and the fiber length is small l bar, then the drafting unit, this drafting unit will be able to process the fibers without any undue stretch. The length will be as shown in this uh, equation that is l bar should be less than or equal to capital D r, where D r representing the diameter of the roller in this case as per this diagram. To avoid contact between the rollers, now the point is we have to always ensure that there should not be any accidental contact between the rollers when the rollers are running at high speed. Therefore, we must maintain a minimum gap between the rollers and therefore, if we maintain this gap between the rollers and if that gap is we say this gap is epsilon therefore, the fiber length the drafting unit can process when the gap with an allowance as shown in that case the length of the fiber that can be processed is going to be L bar is going to be less than or equal to d r plus epsilon. Hence, for the given fiber length and allowance the allowance is to avoid accidental touching between the rollers. If the fiber length is given, then we can find out what should be the roller diameter. The roller diameter should be greater than or equal to L bar minus epsilon. 
and if you look see the table on the right hand side this table shows the fiber length and the allowance let us say which is to avoid accidental contact if that is equal to 3 millimeter then for each fiber we can find out what is going to be the diameter of the roller. The diameter of the roller for 22 mm fiber should be greater than equal to 19 mm. That means, the diameter cannot be less than 19, it should be 19 or more. So, for from 22 to 51 for different fiber length, the diameters are mentioned here. For the 51 millimeter fiber length, which is close to almost 2 inches fiber, the longest cotton fibers are around 2 inches or 2 and 1 fourth inch. The roller diameter that we need will be more than 48 mm. So, what we see here that since we have fibers, cotton fibers having length varying from 22 to 51 millimeter, the roller diameter therefore needs to be different for different fiber length. It appears a range of rollers are needed to process the available cotton fibers with us. This is what we say that we get a lower bound about the fibers, about the roller diameter for processing a fiber of a given length. Then if I choose a fiber, a roller diameter which is large, then it will not be able to process the fibers which are shorter in length. There is another aspect that also we have to see that uh, which we will discuss just now. The lower bound of roller diameter for different fiber lengths can be therefore determined. Changing roller diameter frequently for accommodating fiber of different lengths cannot be a suitable option in industrial practice. Once the machine is made, it is not that we can frequently change the rollers in order to process fibers of different lengths. So, that sort of options we should not have. Hence, there is a need to decide diameter or diameter combinations that suit a wide length range of cotton fibers by resorting to manipulating or manipulating the allowance that is setting. As if we can move the rollers from each other little bit and by doing so, we will make sure that the fibers are never gripped simultaneously by both the rollers and therefore, we can avoid damage to the fibers if we move the fibers from each other. Instead of bringing them very close to each other, we can keep them at a distance from each other. That is that allowance epsilon which was there only to avoid the accidental touching, we can further increase it and make sure that even little longer fibers also can be processed. For an example, a 26 mm diameter rollers and allowance epsilon varying between 3 to 6 mm, one can process fibers from 29 mm to 32 mm without risk of breaking them. If I use a 26 mm diameter rollers and I keep an allowance minimum allowance of 3 mm, then I can easily process fibers 29 mm because there is no risk of these fibers getting simultaneously nipped by both the rollers. Similarly, if we increase the setting, the gap which is up to 6 mm suppose, then we can go up to 32 mm fibers. So, therefore, by adjusting the gap, we will be able to process fibers of longer length. This possibility exists and that we have to explore. That is how far we can go in order to process fibers. The other aspects while deciding the roller diameter is the production rate and production rate is connected to rotational speed or delivery speed of the roller basically. For a given delivery rate V, the rotational speed will be V by pi d, where 
or dr we can write or dr is the diameter of the roller. So, so what we see here is that the rotational speed depends upon the diameter of the roller for a given delivery rate. So, in this table we have for different delivery rate starting from 300 to 1000 we have chosen three different diameters of rollers and the rotational speeds are shown here. Let us see for the case of 28 millimeter delivery rate changing from 300 to 1000 the roller speed is changing from 3400 to all more than 11000. So, if I try to increase delivery rate keeping roller diameter same we have to rotate the roller at a faster and faster speed. But for a given speed if we increase roller diameter then as we go from smaller to bigger diameter the rotation speed reduces. So, bigger rollers we will turn at a lesser speed for a given delivery rate and delivery rate is directly connected to the production rate. The other advantages with the bigger diameter is, so one advantage is that it can be done at a lesser speed for a given delivery rate and hence it will exert less thrust on the bearing. When the speed is less, the bearing, the thrust on the bearing also is going to be less bigger diameter rollers due to its lower curvature reduces the lapping tendency of the drafted fleece. This is something which you have not heard till now. We face a lot of drafting problem. One of the problem is lapping. What that lapping means? That the fibers tends to stick to the roller surface and it start rolling or wrapping the roller. Now, this is something means the ducting is completely disturbed, the roller diameter will be increasing because the fibers is has started wrapping around the roller. So, we have to immediately stop the machines. If we do not do it, then the rollers might also bend if there is excessive lapping around the roller. So, this is a problem in industrial practice and it has been found that bigger diameter rollers has an advantage in this case. The incidence of lapping goes down when the roller diameter is big because the curvature is less. We will study these aspects in more detail in some other course. The other thing is larger rollers causes large surface area of contact between fibers and rollers and thus enhance the grip on the fibers facilitating transfer of motion from roller to fibers. See the motion transfer from the bottom roller to fibers and from fibers to the top roller takes place all because of the frictional grip between the rollers and the fibers. Now, the frictional force which will act between the fiber and the roller depends upon the area of contact between the fiber and the roller. So, the diameter of the roller is bigger, the curvature is less and therefore, the actual area of contact between the fiber and the roller is in this case the fiber basically, basically means sliver will be large and therefore, motion transfer is going to be better from bottom roll to the fibers and thereafter from fiber to the top roller. If the grip is better, fibers can be easily pulled out from the back roller nip. So, these are the advantages of the bigger diameter rollers. However, the disadvantages is the bigger roller will increase nip to nip distance and make many fibers shorter than nip to nip distance to behave as floating fibers and may increase drafting irregularity. So, another aspect that we have to discuss in some other lecture that is known as drafting irregularity. We will discuss it uh, in some other lecture. This irregularity depends upon 
one important factor that is the difference in length between the fiber and the nib to nib. When we go for bigger diameter rollers, there are there could be situations that are when there will be many fibers which will be shorter than nib to nib distance. And hence these fibers we call them floating fibers and these floating fiber is the source of generation of drafting irregularity. Till now what we have considered is that the fiber length is something suppose L 28 millimeter or 24 millimeter, but in actual case with cotton fibers we have fibers of all sort of length. If I say that there is no cotton fiber available where the length is fixed. If the staple length is say 24 mm that does not mean all the fibers are 24 mm. There are many fibers which will be less than 24 mm. There will be some fibers which will be more than 24 mm also. Because cotton is a natural product and the fiber length is not fixed. From each ball of cotton plant, we get fibers which will be of different length. So, within a sliver, if it is made of cotton, you will have fibers of different length. We have many fibers less than 10 mm or 12 mm or 16 mm. All these fibers are anyway short and if I use big diameter rollers, the nip to nip distance also will be large and many of these fibers will be behaving like floating fibers because they will float in the drafting zone in the sense that they will be neither nipped by the back roller not nipped by the front rollers. So, while they are moving through the drafting zone, there will be a, a time when these shorter variety of fibers will be free to move without any control on them, because they are neither nipped by the back pair nor nipped by the front pair. That means, they are not under positive control and hence we can say that they float. And this is the problem that we face with very big diameter rollers that shorter variety of fibers will generate irregularity. Roller diameter therefore, should neither be too small nor too big. If it is too small, then we also have difficulty. If it is the speed has to be very high, the gripping power of the rollers will be less. So, these are the difficulties in the small diameter rollers. So, otherwise one can think why not to use old small diameter rollers and process small fibers or shorter fibers and if I want to process long fibers, you increase the gap between the rollers and so as to accommodate longer variety of fibers. But the problem is that one is first of all the grip, the gripping power will be less and we have to run them at very high speed for a given delivery rate and the overall bending rigidity of the roller also will be less because there is a lot of force which will be acting on the them. So, these are the difficulties with very small diameter roller and hence what we see that that has to be a compromise we cannot go for very small, we cannot go for very big. So, both upper and lower bound therefore, exist. Rollers of different diameter combinations can also be used to derive the benefits of both small and big diameters. We will see when we discuss the drafting roller arrangements in more details. The reference fiber length could be the fibers used for producing the yarn count 30s to 40s range whose consumption is maximum in the world. So, as a starting point we can always say when a manufacturer is trying or is deciding about the diameters of the rollers to be used in their drafting unit, he will think that the cotton that is consumed maximum in the world and produce maximum in the world, our machine should be able to process those cotton first and then we will have some mechanism 
to accommodate shorter variety of fibers than their reference length and longer variety of fibers from their reference length. So, the starting length could be the length of fiber that is used to produce a count 30s or 40s any. Now, from the drafting rollers, we move on to drafted wave or, con and or fleece condensation. See, once the drafting is over, what we get is a fleece of fibers as shown in a picture. You see the fleece which is moving out from the front rollers. So, it is a thin sheet of fibers and then thin sheet of fibers is moving out at a very high speed. This speed is much faster than the speed at which we produce the carded sliver. The speed could be here 400 meters per minute or 500 or 600 even more depending upon the, uh, the draw frame that we have. So, this drafted fleece needs to be condensed because we have to transform the two dimensional sheet into a round shaped sliver again. The drafted fleece is basically very weak to maintain its integrity at high speed and needs to be condensed into sliver quickly. So, therefore, fleece being very weak and being delivered at a high speed there will be a lot of resistance of air to the movement of the fleece. So, we will cannot allow the fleece to travel a long distance without any support. Either we need a support in the earlier machines when the speed was less, there used to be some kind of guiding table for the fleece, but those days the speed used to be much less, so it was ok. But today, because of the very high speed of delivery, we have to make sure that the fleece is condensed very fast into a sliver. So, the path they have to travel before they get consolidated should be as short as possible and that is the part of the machine design. At high speed, there could be air turbulence around the front roller and that it is, there is air drag and therefore, the fleece funnel and the wave guide is placed or has to be placed very, very close to the front roller nib to gather the wave and guide it immediately through the sliver trumpet. We have already discussed about trumpet in our carding uh, discussions. So, trumpet is a, as I said earlier is a conical device through which the fleece has to pass through. So, the gathering point which is known as the fleece funnel should be as close as possible to the front roller nib so that it does not travel a long distance and does not get disturbed and then immediately we have to pass through the trumpet. The trumpet board being very, very narrow is introduces transverse compression on the fleece and transform it into a round shape sliver immediately. So, here the geometry of a web condensation zone should facilitate quick collection guidance and consolidations of the fleece. The delivery direction of the drafted fleece and the can should match as far as possible. So, if you look at this diagram, you will see nowadays the way the rollers are placed or arranged that the final delivery direction of the fleece and the can the angle that it makes, we will discuss it in the in, in, in some other lecture, their minimum. So, that the fleece does not need to turn too much 
before they get into the fleece funnel. You have to make sure that they do not need to turn. Fleece is very, very flimsy material. If I make it turn too much, then there is a chance that it may hit some surface and may get crumbled and therefore, it will lead to generation of irregularity into the product. At high speed of delivery, the trajectory of the delivered fleece extends, making gathering of the wave and subsequent entry into the trumpet difficult and it used to affect the accumulation process and subsequent turning to get into the trumpet. So, especially with high delivery speed, the problem is more because the fleece will try to move forward at as we deliver at a higher and higher speed. And therefore, if we make this fleece to turn too much in order to get into the trumpet, then there is a possibility that the fleece may get crumbled and therefore, they may get folded and hence they lead to difficulties. The final result will be an uneven sliver. A high speed drop frame therefore, the delivery nib deflects the fleece towards the fleece funnel. So, we have to arrange the rollers in such a way that the delivery direction of the fleece and the fleece funnel are almost matching each other and they are quickly passing through the trumpet guide and then by drawn by the calendar rollers and that thereafter it enters the, um, the package formation mechanism that is the coiler. We discuss a bit about the trumpet now because after the fleece funnel is used to actually gather the wave and then it has to pass through a trumpet. Trumpet we have already you know, discussed with uh, uh, discussed earlier also. It is just a funnel and the adapted sliver fleece is passed through it for consolidation. So, the funnel is shown here in the diagram and we see that it is basically conical in nature. The sliver gets compressed by the reaction force as the bulky material passes through the constricted space of the trumpet bore. To ensure easy passage of sliver, the inner surface of the trumpet is polished and should be free from dust or spin finish accumulations. You will find that the trumpet, the inner surface should be highly polished because we have to reduce the friction between the fiber and the inner wall of the trumpet. So, that the resistance to the passage of fiber is minimum. The compaction of the wave depends upon the bore or, or diameter in relation to the sliver mass and its bulk. So, what is the diameter? This is the bore. This diameter the relation to the sliver mass is very, very important because that will decide the compaction process, the force that will develop on the fibers while it is made to pass through this trumpet bore. And there is a simple formula, though most of the machine manufacturers will give some suggestions regarding the different types of trumpet board to be used for different types of sliver hank or different types of material. A simple formula that has been uh, devised which is uh, an empirical relationship is the diameter of the trumpet board is going to be k root over s, where s is the sliver linear density and k is a factor that varies between 1.6 to 1.9. So, by using this simple empirical equation, we can have a very fast estimate about the trumpet bore and we can use that trumpet and check the quality of the sliver 
or any other processing difficulty that we face. Otherwise, generally, the when we buy a machines, there is a manual which is given also, and if we go through the manual, then we will find that the machine manufacturer has suggested the type of boards to be used for different type of sliver hang or sliver made from different types of fibers. One thing we have to remember is this, the trumpet gets heated due to friction between fiber and its inner wall and the heat may damage thermoplastic fibers. This possibility could be there, that is because of continuous abrasion, the fibers are moving through this constricted space at a velocity of let us say on an average let us say 500 to 600 meters per minute. So, continuous abrasion over a period of time means lot of generation of heat and the trumpet gets therefore heated and when the temperature rises too much there could be a chance that sometime thermoplastic fibers especially polyester or nylon they might get damaged. This is especially true when the machine stops for few seconds. When the machine is running at high speed, the duration of contact is very, very limited. Therefore, it may not create that much of problem. But when the machine stops due to some reason, then the duration of contact between the fiber and the roller surface or the, the trumpet. It is not only the trumpet, the drafting rollers also gets heated very much the bottom rollers, the top rollers also get heated because there is also continuous abrasion between the fiber and the rollers. So, both the rollers as well as the trumpet, they are heated because of continuous friction between fiber and that heat would be a source of trouble especially when the machine stops and the fibers remains in contact with this heated surface for longer period of time this we have to remember. So, this heat may not create any problem with cotton because cotton is not a thermoplastic fiber. The last point that comes about the machine is the package formation. So, package formation means basically means depositing the sliver in a can. We have discussed it in the uh, while discussing carding machine. The mechanism remains exactly same. So, the package in terms of formation, shape, everything is same. Only thing is the size is different. Card cans are quite large in diameter, whereas the draw frame cans are little smaller in diameter. The card can can contain 60 kg of material, the draw frame can will have a capacity of 18 to 22 kilo of material. The rest of the things remain same, the slide bar laying mechanism exactly same. The consolidated slide bar as it passes through the trumpet is pulled out by a pair of calendar rollers from the trumpet and pushed into a coiler tube fixed on the rotating coiler plate as shown in the diagram. As the plate rotates, the slide is delivered into the can in the form of coils. So, there are coils after coils in which the slide is laid. And uh, the other thing is the can, it is the slide is being laid on a plate which we call the um, can plate. And this plate is actually, this is the plate in this diagram and you see below the plate there is a spring and spring is then fixed at the bottom of the can. So, as we lay down more and more material on it, the weight is increasing with time, the spring is getting compressed and the material is going down and down. 
within the can the can the can plate moves down and down and we hold the material within the can each can can accommodate almost 5000 meter of sliver the coil diameter is slightly less than the can diameter to avoid any friction hindrance to withdrawal of the sliver between the inner wall of the can and the sliver while it is withdrawn. So, what happens is that while we remove the sliver from the can, there is a chance that the sliver may come into contact with the inner wall of the can and this we have to avoid because sliver is a very, very flimsy material, very, very weak. So, if there is any friction between the inner wall of the can and the sliver, some fiber will be lost and whatever fiber will be lost from the sliver, the sliver is little thinner there. So, we have to avoid this and hence the diameter of the coil that is this diameter from here to is little less than the overall diameter of the can and that is all about the basic structure of the machine and the way the different parts of the machine work. With this let us stop. Thank you.